Hello. Uh, after uh, some disastrous weeks in the hospital, now I'm uh, well, and I would like to uh, tell you, uh, talk about kinematics mechanisms. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to make a correction that I have. Uh, uh, there was an error uh, uh, I had uh, in uh, uh, Ball's point definition, Ball's point, if I locating the Ball's point. Now, the Ball's point is determined geometrically. You, uh, you draw the two uh, image pole triangles, P12, P13, P231, and P12, P14, P4241. You draw the locus of points whose three positions lie in a circle, for positions 1, 2, 3, and positions 1, 2, 4. Uh, for four points to lie in a circle, uh, it, uh, it, to lie on a straight line, it has to be on both of these circles, so it is at the intersection of these two circles. There are two intersections of these two circles. One is P12, which is trivial. The other is the Bose point. Now, I made a mistake. You see, uh, analytically, these two equations have two different lambda values at Bose point. It's not one lambda value does not define the Bose point. So what we do is, for position 1, 2, 3, we know we have a circle equation in complex numbers as such. Uh, for 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 4, we write those two equations. Now, number 1, when lambda is equal to infinity, for lambda 1, 2, 3, and lambda 1, 2, 4, I call them, uh, uh -huh. I have to change this, uh, 2, 3, and uh, um, lambda 1, Two, four. I think I have done it. Uh, whenever lambda one two three is equal to infinity and lambda one two four is equal to infinity, it defines the pole P one two. Equating the two equations, you see I have two uh, parameters: lambda one two three and lambda one two four. Uh, I have to satisfy both these equations, so I equate the two. We end up with a lambda 1, 2, 3 plus b lambda 1, 2, 4 is equal to c. a, b, c are functions of four positions as such. Okay, So I can determine these values. These values are known if you are given the four positions. Now, I take the uh, complex conjugate of this equation. What you can do is you can write the real and imaginary parts, obtain two equations, two scalar equations in terms of lambda 1, 2, 3 and lambda 1, 2, 4. Or you can take the complex conjugate of this, uh, the, this equation. You will end up with two linear equations in complex plane. <coughs> Solve for lambda 1, 2, 3, solve for lambda 1, 2, 4, and you end up with lambda b 1, 2, 3, lambda b 1, 2, 4. These are the values of lambda for positions 1, 2, 3. Instead of lying on, uh, on a straight line for positions 1, 2, 3, it will also lie on position 4. And But the, it will be the circle defined by uh, th these three positions. Uh, lambda b1, 2, 4 will be the circle point. You have to use this equation to determine the Bose point corresponding to this lambda b1, 2, 3. So I have uh, changed the function and I have placed it, uh, I have uh, erased the previous ones and I have placed these. Uh, uh, solutions, uh, the, the results uh, in, in the uh, 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 in, uh, drive uh, so that we can download them and please erase the previous ones. I have a lambda b function 
Ritalin Beysek, in four bar, uh, four, four bar, four position synthesis uh, bus uh, pro program, four position bus. Uh, this lambda b function will give you the, both of these values. So you have to mark two cells and obtain these two values. And you can use any one of them to determine uh, the Bose point, any one of these two equations to determine the Bose point, since you also have uh, an, a, 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 a basic function that will, given these three positions and lambda, uh, lambda you determine the coordinates of the uh, point uh, whose three homologous points lie on a straight line, so this, uh, that you can for three positions. So this is uh, the correction I have to make. Uh, please uh, take note of this. So next, okay, I think I'll save it since I have corrected something. Okay, next uh, I'll just start discussing today's topic, uh, four link crank mechanisms. First, sorry. Now what I mean by four link crank mechanisms is, you see, uh, when we are discussing, we were discussing four position synthesis or three position, position synthesis in all those, we didn't care whether we had a crank rocker, double rocker, or uh, uh, drag link mechanism. Uh, all we needed was a slider crank or four bar uh, that will satisfy our given positions. Now, there is a class of four link mechanisms in which we have one link connected to the fixed link making a complete rotation. This link we call the crank. Okay? Now, amongst the four link mechanisms, these are all uh, these are four, four link mechanisms, that's the only one. You can convert these four link mechanisms to three link mechanisms by simply replacing a, a prismatic joint and a revolute joint uh, into a, a cylinder in a slot joint. So uh, all these can be converted to, uh, except of course not for four, but uh, these links can be converted to uh, three link mechanisms, uh, or two link in this case. Uh, we can do it, two link mechanism. Uh, uh, but that will not work, uh, sorry, uh, in which we can have one of the links making a full complete ro rotation. So the possible candidates for uh, this crank, uh, four link mechanisms with crack properties is four bar mechanism which we call crank rocker or drag link. If both of the links are cranks, we call it uh, sometimes double crank, or uh, usually it's called drag link. The slider crank mechanism can be of uh, crank mechanism. Inverted slider, of course, you need to, a proper proportion. I mean, uh, not all those, any uh, dimensions will not work, but for certain dimensions. Scotch yoke mechanism can be uh, a, a crank uh, mechanism. Uh, all time mechanism, yes, but uh, we don't, I'm not going to analyze this and I'm not going to discuss anything about it because the input output is, uh, has the same velocity, has the same displacement, okay? I, I mean, with a certain, of course, phase angle. Uh, you cannot have a crank in concordant motion mechanism. So uh, these are the possible candidates. So we will discuss these four, uh, each one of these, as a crank mechanism. Now, we shall discuss the global characteristics of these mechanisms, OK? Uh, it, usually, it is the swing angle or how we can design a crank mechanism. So. Of 
course, for crank rocker mechanisms, if you have a crank mechanism uh, using a four bar, we call it crank rocker mechanism. Uh, there are two conditions which have to be satisfied. One is longest plus shortest length must be less than the length of the two the sum of the lengths of the two intermediate links. And secondly, the shortest link is the crank, and the link adjacent to, to the shortest must be fixed. Okay, this is the property of the crank rocker mechanisms. Uh, during this time, uh, the crank is going to have a free rotation, and the output link, B0B, is going to have a certain swing. This is known as a swing angle. This is the amount of oscillation the output link makes. This is called psi. And during this time, from the extended pole to folded position, the crank rotates by a certain angle, phi. Uh, this is known as the corresponding crank rotation. Beta is the initial crank angle at the extended position. At the extended position, the angular velocity of the output link is zero, although you have the input link velocity. Now, one important place where this uh, crank rocker mechanism is used, you see, you remember. We designed, let us say, a four-bar mechanism to move this, uh, these uh, cups from this inclined position to this position. You obtain a four-bar mechanism. We didn't care whether it was crank rocker, double rocker, uh, whatever. Now, this uh, four-bar is going to move in between these two positions. Of course, we can design it for three positions, four positions, but finally, it will move in between the first and the last position, right? One of these links, A0, A, B0, B1, uh, is going to have a certain angular rotation. Both of these links are going to have certain angular rotations. And you can determine that amount of angular rotation by moving from the first position to the last position. It can be 62.2 degrees. I don't care. Now, if you are going to uh, do this continuously, you have to give a rotary input. The input must be rotating continuously and move this thing back and forth. Now, in order to do this, what you have to do is add a four-bar mechanism to this already designed four-bar. You end up with a six-link mechanism. The output link is going to be the swing angle, and that has to be that 62.2 degrees, which is required to move this four-link mechanism, four-bar mechanism, from the first position to the last position. So you design accordingly. Now, phi, we assume that the input link is rotating at a constant speed. In that case, uh, if I se select phi equal to 180 degrees, the time it will take to move from the uh, first position to the last will be equal to the time it takes uh, to move from the last position to the first. Now, this is known as centric for bar, if it is 180 degrees. In certain cases, uh, especially if you are moving, going to move a heavy uh, object uh, in, from one place to the other, and when you are returning back, you are not going to do any work, or when you are uh, using this mechanism to sew or to uh, bend something or to uh, make, uh, to do work in that first cycle and in the second cycle, in, in the return cycle, you are not, you're, it's going to be free. In those cases, if you take the, uh, uh, if you increase the time it takes to, move, to do the work, uh, 
the input will not be stressed that much. So if you spend more time in doing work and less time in doing in moving this thing back to the original position, then what you can do is it, you will uh, increase uh, the, uh, the time to move uh, uh, for in the, during the working cycle while moving from counterclockwise or clockwise, and then you will decrease the time it will take uh, in the reverse mode, uh, direction. Now, in that case, since input crank is rotating at a constant velocity, uh, if you change the time ratio, uh, if you increase the angle, of, the angle of rotation during the working stroke, then it will be uh, you will be uh, the mechanism, the, uh, the input uh, uh, is going to, uh, you are not going to have, uh, uh, well, uh, you can uh, increase the efficiency of the system because usually uh, the working cycle determines when you are doing some work, you have to do it at a certain speed. Okay, so uh, that is fixed. Uh, during sewing or bending, you have to do it at a certain speed. If you increase the speed in that case, uh, the resulting uh, work will not be uh, as good as it has to be. So what you do is, you keep that, but if you return with the same speed in the reverse direction, you will be spending too much time. So what you do is, uh, with this time ratio, you can increase the efficiency of the, system, of the machine, meaning the machine will work faster. You, uh, you will have more output uh, from the same system. Uh, because in recent years, uh, the main uh, aim in all the machinery is to increase the speed, to increase the productivity. So uh, if you do this, uh, you will be able to uh, increase the speed of the input. Uh, but you will see that, you will uh, you'll find, I'll show you that later that uh, you cannot do this uh, uh, too much uh, because in that case uh, you will be, uh, there will be some other problems related uh, to the transmission, to force transmission characteristics. Uh, but you, you can do it to some extent. Another problem that we have to face is the transmission angle. In a, when it, we have a crank rocker mechanism, the system is going to rotate, uh, have a complete rotation. You see, in case of uh, position synthesis, what we had to check was the transmission angle in between the positions, okay? Uh, during the motion from the first to the last, Position and you didn't care for the, for the, for the uh, any other transmission angle. Now, since the crank is going to have a complete rotation, we have uh, we define. Of course, you, you know the, the uh, definition of the transmission angle. I'm not going to discuss that. Now, this transmission angle mu, I can use. It is a function of uh, the input crank angle. This angle is theta 1, 2. I can write the diagonal AB0 in terms of the triangle AA0B. It will be A2 squared plus A1 squared minus 2A2A1 cosine theta 1, 2. And I can also write this diagonal in terms of 
AB be 0, it will be A3 squared plus A4 squared minus 2A3A4 cosine mu. Equate the two equations, and I will end up with this equation, or usually we write it like this. Uh, this is cosine mu, a constant term, big length, and function of cosine of theta 1, so a1, a2, over a3, a4. If a1 squared plus a2 squared is equal to a3 squared plus a4 squared, that is known as centric four bar, and that is phi is equal to 180 degrees. In that case, a1 squared plus a2 squared is equal to a3 squared plus a4 squared. Uh, you can take the derivative of this equation, uh, equate it to zero. It turns out that uh, mu is a maximum or a minimum when theta 1, 2 is 0 or pi. These are the two critical angles, mu max and mu min. What is important is it is deviation from 90 degrees. I don't care which one is critical. Okay, I mean, uh, mu max can be critical, mu min can be critical, depending on the problem, depending on the link length. Uh, notice one other thing. Uh, for the dead centers, uh, extended position and folded positions uh, result with a triangular loop. BF A0 B0 is the folded loop, and A0 B E B0 is the extended position loop. Keep that in mind. Now, we have a classical transmission angle problem, which was defined first by Alt uh, in 1925. Uh, it says, determine the crank rocker proportions of a four bar mechanism with a given swing angle, psi, and corresponding crank rotation, phi, or time ratio, which is the same thing, such that the maximum deviation of the transmission angle from 90 degrees is a minimum. Now, I can divide this problem into two portions. One is determine the link lengths that will satisfy, determine a four bar mechanism of crank rocker proportions that has a certain swing angle, psi, and a crank rotation, phi. First, I have to solve that. And then I have to determine the optimum in terms of uh, transmission angle. That's the second part. That's the optimization part. Now, at the extended and folded positions, notice these are the uh, triangles. I have, I can write the loop equations as follows. A2 e to i beta, beta is the initial crank angle plus A3 e to i beta, they are the same direction, is equal to A1 plus A4 e to the i psi 1. Psi 1 is the initial angle of the output link, uh, psi 1, I call it psi 1, it doesn't matter. For the folded position, A2 e to the i beta plus phi plus a3 e to i beta plus pi plus uh, plus phi minus pi because it is is a f b f it is in the opposite direction to a2 a0 8 a f is equal to a1 plus a4 e to the i psi 1 plus psi these two equations I can write as a2 plus a3 e to i beta, I could combine these two, minus a4 e to i psi 1 is equal to a1. A, the second equation, since e to i pi, it will be minus a3 e to i beta plus phi. So a2 minus a3 e to i beta e to i phi minus a4 e to i psi 1 uh, times e to i psi is equal to a1. 
Now, I have two equations. Whenever you are correlating angles, the Lindmax are not important. It is the ratio of the Lindmax that is important. Meaning, uh, I don't care if this whole mechanism is uh, enlarged 10 times or uh, made it small uh, in a micro level. I don't care. It is, uh, it will have the same angular. Uh, relations. Because of that, I can very easily select A1 equal to unity. Or I can divide every term by A1 and use that those equations. It doesn't matter. Now, in this case, I have two complex equations, notice. That means four scalar equations. I have um, as unknowns, A2, A3, beta, psi1, A4. A2, A3, A4, beta, psi1. So that is, you have five parameters, unknown parameters. So this means I have an infinite set, a single infinite set of solutions set of proportions of a four-bar mechanism of Kraft-Rocker proportions that will satisfy a given swing angle and corresponding crank rotation form. Okay? So, amongst, I have to search for solutions from an infinite set, a singly infinite set. I can select beta as a parameter. Uh, instead, we change the parameters. Since we have five parameters, we change the parameters. We let Z1 is equal to A2 e to i beta. Z1 is equal to A2 e to i beta. That is the initial position of the input crank, A0, A, A extended. Z2, A4 e to i psi1. That is this link extended. Okay, B0, B, E extended. And then this Z1 has two parameters. Okay, this is a complex number. It has two parameters. Z2 has two parameters. A2 and beta, A4 and psi1 in polar form. Uh, lambda is the ratio of A3 over A2. For crank rocker proportions, since A2 must be the shortest link, uh, lambda must be greater than unity. It must be greater than one. Now, if we write, change the parameters from A, A2, A3, A4, etc., to SI1 and beta, to these four parameters, Z1, Z2, and lambda, we end up with these two equations. A2, E3, beta, notice, is lambda. A3, e to i beta is lambda z1. So it is 1 plus lambda z1. A4 e to i sin 1 is minus z2 is equal to 1. We let the a1 is equal to 1. And then a2 minus a3. A2 e to i beta is uh, z1. Minus a3 e to i beta is Z1 lambda e to i phi, 1 minus lambda Z1 minus Z2 e to i psi is equal to unity, 1. Now, in, when we write these two equations, these are the loop equations in extended and fold uh, central positions. When we look at these two equations, if we assume lambda, these two equations constitute two complex equations in two complex unknowns and linear. That's the beauty. So you can solve for Z1 and Z2 
z1 and z2, uh, you know, simply uh, induce Kremlin zoo to obtain this result. Now, z1, this is the equation. I, uh, I think you have seen this uh, for the three positions to I in a straight line. If you have an equation as a plus lambda b divided by c plus lambda uh, uh, d, a, b, c, d, not all being uh, equal to zero, uh, you end up with a circle equation in complex numbers. This is the equation of a circle. Z2, again, is the equation of a circle. Now, Z1, with origin 0, is the circle. Z2, since I have to, Z2 is measured from here. So I have to add 1 plus Z2 to bring the two circles to the same coordinate system. If I because of that, I, I, I draw 1 plus C2, it is this circle, and uh, these are the two circles, which we call K, A, K, B. Uh, if you draw a line from A0, it will intersect K, A circle at A extended, and KB circle at B extended. But not all these uh, straight lines will give you a slight uh, crack rocker proportion. Because notice, in this case, up to here, up to here, uh, A0AE, the crank, will be less than the coupler. But from here on, from this point on, the crank will be larger than, sorry, uh, the crank will be larger than the coupler. So there is a limit in those cases. Uh, Alt has not found these equations. These equations are due to frigidity. Uh, what Alt did was, uh, these two circles are circular center, uh, center points. For the relative motion, uh, because it is not a two-position problem, because uh, you, since they are dead center, the angular velocity of the output link relative to the input link is zero at these two positions. So, uh, it is two infinitesimally close positions, what we call. Uh, these are the Burmester curves. These are the Burmester curves. This straight line, the Burmester curves, in this case, degenerates into a straight line and a circle. This is the circle point uh, dash lines. This is the center point. If you consider the motion of B, B, B0 relative to A0, A. okay? Now, you can determine, you can draw these two circles uh, geometrically as follows. You measure an angle minus phi over 2, minus phi over 2 from A0 along A, A relative to A, A0, B0. You measure an angle minus psi over 2 from uh, B, B0. Uh, these, and then draw these lines. Notice these two lines. One is minus phi over 2, the other is minus psi over 2. These two lines intersect at the relative pole, R, this point. This circle considers R A0 as it is diameter. Okay? You draw the circle with R A0 as it is diameter, this point to this point, as it is diameter. You draw this circle by dropping a perpendicular uh, from uh, drawing a line perpendicular to R A0 
from the midpoint, you determine the center, and then you draw a circle with this point as the center, passing through R and A0. Sorry. Let me read. Uh, you draw a, a line perpendicular R A0 uh, from the center. You determine the center of the circle, and then you draw a circle with this point as the center, passing through R and A0. That is KB. So, uh, that's the geometrical, but that's what Ant did, uh, actually. <coughs> Further in 1972, and Primrose, <coughs> Primrose is a mathematician, by the way, uh, a British mathematician. Uh, remember Z1 is equal to A2 tri beta, Z2 is equal to A4 e tri side 1, lambda is equal to A3 over A2, A1 is equal to 1. You can determine A2, A3, A4 by simply taking and multiplying Z1 with its complex conjugate, it will give you A2 squared. Taking the uh, Z2 and multiplying it with uh, its complex conjugate, it will give you A4 squared. Uh, taking the multiplying by lambda uh, will give you A3 squared. The A2 squared by lambda will give you A3 squared. Lambda squared, A3 squared. <coughs> uh, what you do is you let T is equal to tangent 1 and 5 u is equal to tangent 1 half phi minus psi, v is equal to tangent 1 half psi, you substitute into these equations, since we have z1 and z2 like this. I did it once, and uh, I know it's not that simple, but you can do it. Uh, <coughs> actually, you will obtain a2 squared will be equal to v squared or 1 plus v squared, all divided by, <coughs> sorry, u squared plus lambda squared plus, uh, divided by 1 minus plus u squared. Uh, so you will end up like that. So instead, what the, you do is you let, instead of taking a1 equal to unity, uh, you take the uh, uh, numerator. Uh, denominator, sorry, uh, say this is equal to A1 squared. These are what you can write in terms of phi uh, and psi and lambda, you obtain the link lengths as such. Uh, it was Volmer, Volmer uh, actually, uh, who uh, came up with instead of using lambda as the parameter, you, you, you can use beta as the parameter, and you will end up with A2 is equal to sine 1 half psi, cosine 1 half phi plus beta, sine 1 half phi minus psi, and A3 uh, is equal to the, uh, this term, and A4 is equal to, this is nothing but cosine theorem in the extended position, okay? Uh, and, and A1 is equal to 1. Uh, in this case, beta is the parameter, and you have an infinite set of solutions, some of which will not satisfy crank rocker proportions. Uh, for crank rocker proportions, number one, you have to have psi in between 0 and 180 degrees. You cannot have a swing angle larger than 180 degrees, no way, for crank rocker proportions. Uh, and secondly, 90 plus 1 half psi must be less than phi, and this must be less than 270 plus 1 half psi. These two conditions must be satisfied for character proportions. You can never have a swing angle uh, greater than 180 degrees, and uh, those can, uh, I'll show you 